Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to go through the steps on using the Deep Six Diving Bell. Now this is something that I created a couple years ago now, but in the last month or so it went through a huge retrofit including receiving multiple air tanks and other systems, so it is now different to use. You will also see behind the actual creation here are two vessels that come with the Deep Six Diving Bell. One of them is the Avala, you can see it here beneath this massive gantry, and the other one is the Algri, which you can see here on the rear deck, attached with a pulley system to the large winch or huge winch there. So these ships come standard with the diving bell, and like I said, you can also get this creation, which is the standalone diving bell, which could then be placed on your own ship if you want. Now the controls for the standalone unit are simply you actually hop into it and use it beneath the water. You use this button here to pretty much lower the winch. And you can see the winch is moving or going and we're now lowering ourselves. The standalone unit comes with a simple winch controller but you can place your own winch controller and your own winch and whatever else you may need. So the only thing that comes from the winch feed is this camera feed that changes from inside view and outside view. So if you do have someone on the support ship, you can kind of see what's going on there. Now that's a very simplistic approach. On my vessels, we actually have a more detailed approach. The actual operation of them is the same, but to release them or get them going is a little bit different. So in the Avala, you actually have to go into the crane um, con crane control room, and then you can find out where the diving bell is and have it released. Once it's released, you can open up your moon pool door, and once your moon pool is released, then you can actually drop your huge winch. So you can see here, we're kind of dropping it. Now it does take a little bit to fit through the uh, moon pool here. And you may have to go up and down a little bit just because unfortunately um, I maximized the size of the bell in order to get maximum usability. But you can see, there it is. So once it's floating like that, you could make your way down to the diving bell and then you'll want to get in. For the Deep Six Diving Bell, you actually need to get in through the bottom because you can see that hatch, first of all, is submerged beneath the waterline, but also physically you can't even get to it because of this. So you can't go through there. So what you'll want to do is go through the bottom. Now one thing you may want to pre prepare the diving bell with is to use this air pump and actually recharge these tanks. Now keep in mind that the way the game works is even when you default start off with gas in here, you could still add a little bit more and it kind of floods the pipes and whatnot, but not super needed, just a little nice thing to do. Then what you'll want to do is whether you want to grab a diving gear or not, but you got to hop into the water, go beneath it, and you'll open this airlock. Now the airlock opens and you can pop in and you can close the airlock. However, the diving bell will not function if it's closed. So you'll actually need to have the airlock open in order for you to properly utilize this system. Now, what we'll do is we hop in to the top compartment and you kind of have to jump around a little bit like you just saw there. Now we'll close this door, hop into the seat and you could see the diving bell is flooding with water and soon it's going to have negative buoyancy and it will drop but for what we can also do is lower the diving bell as you see here and just use this winch controller there so once we've utilized this winch now you can open the diving lock or airlock and you can swim around however you want so you can use these two doors oh see that that is the ground you'll need to extend the legs with the legs extended, now you can actually get beneath the diving bell and go swim around. 
So you have two access hatches, both of which are kind of used for the flooding process. And this area here will remain dry. Now one thing you'll want to do, if you take off your diving gear especially, is enable the air system. Once the air system's enabled, you'll notice that it will automatically use these levels and make sure that we can breathe in here. So it takes a little while to calibrate. It doesn't happen instantaneously. It kind of calibrates the calculation out. But in essence, the system is running and you have a set amount of time before you even have critical levels. And at that point is when this light turns green and it's kind of functioning and whatnot, but that's all you really need to do. You also have other stuff, so you can open the ballast from here. So this bottom one, if you do have this closed up, you could actually press that and that opens that bottom door. So if you are inside the mini sub through the hatch, this hatch, you can actually have that open without going down there. Of course, we showed you the legs, raising and lowering. The exterior spotlights is self-explanatory. Exterior lights that aren't spotlights and you have magols, so you could actually secure the thing to the seabed. So those are all set up systems you have to your disposal. You have an emergency button, you have a heater, because when you go really deep, it could get quite cold. Right now we're super shallow, but it could get very cold. Then you have gear all over the place, and you have a couple of tanks. Now, the tanks are useful to you. They're useful to you because you can take one of these hoses, attach the tank to this and then it starts to fill this diving gear vice versa you can attach it to that one or attach this tank to this guy and it will fill your diving gear so you can fill your diving gear also if you're in here and you find that your air quality starts to get very poor then you can actually open this up and yes it will increase your pressure but in addition to increasing your pressure, it'll give you much more air quality. So this is kind of like your emergency use air tank that you can use. Alternatively, you can also take this, attach it to one of these, and it'll actually fill this tank up from that emergency tank. Now to go back up is the same process. I recommend you're seated and you just kind of raise the diving bell. And you can see it kind of flops up and here we are kind of bobbing on the surface so you could continue to raise it and once you're kind of above the water line as we are now you can also retract your legs but not only that now is when I recommend you open this door and it will kind of use that bottom hatch for draining. However, it doesn't drain it super quickly. So if you have something like this that's full of water, you can go to your air pump, grab the hose, attach it, and attach it to that nozzle there. And it's even labeled drain, water drain, pump air in. And once you're pumping air in, you'll see the water level will start to drop in there. So you do have to have a vacuum, not a vacuum, you have to push water or air pressure in in order to get the water to drain. If you wait long enough, the thing will fully drain itself. And at that point, you can detach the hose and your diving bell is pretty much ready to stow away. So that's the simple way to kind of explain how to use the deep six on the Avala. On the RSV Allegory, it's similar, but a little bit different. And I'll show you how. So here, you don't have that little control center and here you have your winch right there. Now what you'll need to do is make your way into the bridge and this is where your control center is. So in here is where you operate all the cranes, but you don't release the diving belt from here. You actually have to be outside and this is where you release the thing. So with the diving belt released, now you'll want to make your way into the bridge and then you can start to operate 
the systems. Now you'll see here we have jib crane, which is the small one, and the gantry. So we'll want to turn on the gantry crane and unlock the gantry crane. With it unlocked, we can actually position it over top of the diving bell. So that's the first thing. Now you can turn on your display here so you can watch the progress. And pretty much once you're over top of the diving bell, you'll have to have yourself or a crew member go down there and attach it with rope. So we could see this rope and we can climb up this and you'll want to put it on this winch and on that anchor. And you'll want to do that on both sides. And that's why we have these little ladders here to facilitate this. So you attach it to there and you kind of can't see through your arm, but we could attach it to there. So we've now attached the diving bell to the medium winches on the gantry system. And it's all released and all good to go. So at this point, we can raise up our gantry and you'll see the whole thing will start to kind of go up. And as well as that, we can raise our gantry crane winch. So that's number five is reel it in. So we've reeled it in and you can see it's kind of bobbing up there, but that should give us enough clearance to take it over top of these boats. Previously, you had to release the boats in order to do this, but with the latest update, I wanted to be able to clear them. So you get all the way to the end and then you can rotate your gantry crane. So you slowly rotate it like that and eventually the thing will plop into the water. You can also at this point start to have to winch out the gantry crane, which is number six and let it kind of float in the water there. Now keep in mind, we have to disconnect the, the, the cables that we just attached. So again, if you have a crew member, if you're playing multiplayer, or if you're playing by yourself, you'll want to put them in these slots here. So that's why I put those. And now the diving belt is good to go. So with that done, you can pop yourself into the diving bell, just like we did with this system. We go down here, open the airlock, hop on in, and even it may be helpful to close the airlock in order to fully get inside here without glitching. And once this is done, you can turn this on. It'll start to flood the system. You could even close this and you can start to lower the diving bell. Now you can see that we're giving a large amount of play here. It's going through that pulley right up there. So it doesn't go right away. You gotta have to give it a little bit of time with the slack that it has, but eventually it will start to drop down. And there we are. Now I do know that there's something that fell off the algorithm. I have to fix that after, but anyways, you extend your legs, those raise up, and then you could open this up, throw on your diving gear and go for a little swim. So same system to bring it back up and load it just opposite of what we just did. You take it up to the ship, attach it to the gantry, load the gantry over top and move it. Now, the one thing actually I just see now, the gantry itself is kind of sliding on these small connectors or small tracks. And um, unfortunately, I think what you'd have to do is lock it in place in this back here. So if we're up here, we can move them until, or move this crane until it comes to the end. We'll tur oh, turn on the lock and you'll see it's gonna lock itself in place. So then it's actually gonna stay there. So that's just the limitation of the small track. Yes, I could give it constant power, pushing it to the end. The problem with that is it's gonna waste a large amount of battery. So down here again, underneath the diving bell, like I said, reverse process, you pop your way in. The seats are there so you can kind of easily get yourself mobilized in there. And once you're in here now, like you said, you can raise the diving bell and it does take some time because it's going through that. Oh, never mind. It goes quite fast. So here you are. Um, I see. Yeah, the uh, system I designed is for the large winch where it actually slows down when we get close. But you could see we're so far from the large winch, it gave us maximum power right into that pulley. So I could revise it at some point. I know it's possible. We have lengths on the pulleys, but... Is it a big deal? Probably not, especially right now it didn't damage itself, so that could be okay. It could also be a simple way of just changing the uh, 
huge winch connector to just make the the huge winch only uh, uh, slow down when it's like whatever this distance is. Maybe it's like 10 meters or something. So all, all things are possibilities, but in general, the system is designed for playability and for everybody to kind of use and get to enjoy the diving bell system. So thank you all for watching. I hope you learned how to use the diving bell in the Avala and the Algri class. The diving bell itself is a lot of fun. You can go explore and dive shipwrecks and all kinds of stuff and go to recharge your scuba gear. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Stay tuned for a lot of other fun stuff, including our Lego build challenge, which is currently on. And until next time, happy stormworksing, everyone.